Hi friends. In this video, I'm going to show you the step by step that I consider the most optimized to do and get everything Tactics Ogre Reborn has to offer. It is possible to achieve the same result in other ways, so it is up to each one's preference. Remembering that you should always read the threads in the Warren Report to release certain events. If you like the videos of the Ogre Battle Saga here on the channel and want to help the old Astromancer rebuild the Kingdom of Zenobia, you can donate an amount through the thanks button that is just below the video. If you intend to buy the game, you can also use our affiliate link on Amazon which helps us a lot, I'll leave it in the video description. Without further ado, let's go to the complete guide to the main events you need to do in Tactics Ogre Reborn. Chapter 1 Our protagonist, Danim Pavel, is a permanent member of our group, so there's no concern there for him. In Chapter 1, the character Canopus Wolf will automatically join the party. In the battle on Corsaro, keep Don Alto presence alive. After winning, he will join the group along with Voltaire Montrose and Sarah Ostwald. In the battle in Rhyme, keep Sistina alive at all costs. In the battle against Gant, don't kill any of his beasts, focus directly on the leader to end the battle quickly and he will flee. At the end of the chapter, refuse to participate in the event in Balbamusa, starting now the chaotic route in Chapter 2. Chapter 2 First, fight the archer Aracel Denia, then you need to save her in a battle and make her survive in her group for two more battles. Achieve this and she joins the group. When you find the Night Falkard Rita Lind, commit to helping him save his friends, always making him survive in battles. When you find the Mage Bay and Rosen Orn, make him survive the battle and agree to help him save his friends. When you find Sistina Farina, make her survive the next battle. With that, at the end of these events, Sistina, Bayan, and Falkard will join the group. At the end of this chapter, refuse to go back to the Resistance, continuing your journey on the Chaotic Path in Chapter 3. Chapter 3 At one point in the campaign, you'll find Hoberim v. Roms being chased, make him survive and he'll join the party. In the battle against Gamp again, don't kill any of his beasts again, defeat him and make him run away. When you return to Almorica, Merton Walhorn and Gildas W. Burn automatically join the party. When you fight and defeat Oz in battle, Seria Farina will automatically join your party. Continue normally until Chapter 4. Chapter 4 Go to Brigantes Castle and choose only Danum for the battle without any equipment or items equipped. That way you can speed up this step and recruit Olivia Farina to the group. Read the topic Port Omish, Den of Thieves, and go to the new point on the map. In battle, keep Diego Gale at Azelston alive. In the battle against Cherry Farina, leave her with critical health, that is, below 10%, but do not kill her, forcing her to flee. Read the topic The Balmamusa Dead and go to Balbamusa. There, revive the cleric Elias and then win the battle. 
Now go to Kadriga Fortress and win the battle there. Before going to the last battle in Galiet, you need to have a high chaos frame for the Galbistani clan. To find this out you must go to the shop and recruit someone new from the Galbistani clan and then analyze their loyalty to you. If it shows any of the following phrases, this unit often speaks on your behalf to win others to your side or this unit looks favorably on your decisions and shares an understanding with you or this unit is prepared to put aside its own interest in service of your cause. You can continue as you have the proper chaos frame. If he shows anything other than that, you'll need to do the death march tactic to increase your loyalty with that clan. How to do the death march in the most efficient way possible. Recruit 11 soldiers from the Galbistani clan at level 1 in the shop. Go to Balbamusa and train the 11 recruits and someone in your group who has a high level. The 11 Galbistani recruits need to die in training and then you can retreat and repeat the process. After one hour of repeating this process, recruit another Galbistani in the shop and check their loyalty. If he says one of the three correct phrases, you can proceed. If not, continue the process of increasing your chaos frame and training until that happens. When your loyalty with the Galbistani is adequate, go to Galiat. Win the battle in Galiat with Cressida Abdelord alive. With your chaos frame high for the Galbistani clan, answer you will not be judged by me and she will join your group. Go to Fitta Castle, and after the cut scene, return to Balba Musa immediately. Sherry Farina will then join the group after another cut scene. Now read the topic The Pirate's Graveyard. Go to the new location that opened on the map and when entering the battle, retreat immediately. Read the topic The Dread Pirate and go to Port Omish and then to Kadriga Fortress. Continue the main story and save Kashua in Barnisha Castle by answering the two questions correctly. Return to Fitta Castle and she will join the party permanently with the princess class. Immediately, go to Port Omish and save Diego again in battle. Now go to Pirate's Graveyard and go to the map called Crystal Halls. Diego will join the battle, and if he survives, he will join the party. After he joins the group, you can leave the dungeon or continue to the last floors to get the pirate's treasure. It's your choice. Now read the topic Mysterious Blast at Exeter and head towards Vask. In the battle on Madura Rift, use a beast tamer with the ability to recruit dragons. You must recruit the five special dragons that are on this map. They are the Hydra, the Arc Dragon, the Dark Dragon, the Flood Dragon, and the Frost Dragon. Remembering that the less life they have, the easier to recruit, and if they have any debuffs on them, the dragon will be temporarily unavailable to be recruited. Once that's done, go to Vask and win the battle there. Then go to the new point that opened on the map called Lazan Fortress. Win both battles and don't worry about the NPC there. Now read the topic The Ancient Temples and immediately go to Kadriga Fortress, Bode Fortress, Damsa Fortress, and Gailed Fortress and defeat the enemies there. Then read the topic Galbistani cited at Lazan and go again to Lazan Fortress and defeat the enemies there. Now, read the topic Farampa open to hunting and go to this new point. You must beat the first map and go to the second one which is called Field of Fallen Shadow. Re-equip your beast tamer with the dragon recruit skill. On this map you can find the Flame Dragon, Thunder Dragon, Earth Dragon, and Cloud Dragon. You must recruit one of each of these four types. If they don't show up on the map, retreat and go again until they do. If only a few of them appear, recruit them, go back to the main map and come back again to recruit the remaining ones. Now that you have all nine types of dragons in your party, 
You can use them in battle, but don't let them die under any circumstances. I also recommend not getting too attached to them for your own good. Now, before going to Heim, read the topic Rams and Wreck raised and go to the new point that opened on the map. In battle, you must save Jonathan Torjo's Lindel for him to join your party. Right after this battle, you should read the topic The Bandits of Namrahava and head to the new point that opened on the map. In this battle, you must avoid killing the Griffins and defeat Gamp one last time. If you win, Gant, Berta, and Abdo will join your party. Now read the topic Fortress Under Siege and go to get your fortress to face the enemies there. Go back to Koratani and in the cutscene answer I know I will. You have just released the quest to acquire the Apocrypha spells. You must return to each of the forts and win a series of battles to get each of the ultimate spells for each element. Lazan Fortress has the ultimate ice magic. Kadriga Fortress has the ultimate thunder magic. Boat Fortress has the ultimate fire magic. Ndamsa Fortress has the ultimate air magic. Gale Fortress has the ultimate water magic. Gecho Fortress has the ultimate earth magic. The first time you beat the final boss of each fortress, you are guaranteed to drop Apocrypha Tier 1. To drop Tier 2 of these spells, you will have to face the final boss of each fortress again and use the resource of turning back the turns until you can drop the spell, as the drop is not guaranteed. After you get all the Apocrypha spells, the Shaman class for the four Farina sisters becomes available. These are the main events of the Chaotic Route. Now you can continue the main story until you defeat Dorgalua and end the game. Once you finish the game, it becomes available for you to continue to the Extra Coda episodes or use the tool to go back in the chapters. Let's use the tool to go back to the end of Chapter 2. Go back to the end of Chapter 2 and this time choose to return to the resistance, starting the neutral path in chapter 3. Chapter 3 After the Gant battle, immediately go to Corsaro to unlock a new event in Kadriga Fortress. In this battle you will find Chemo Zalman, Festa Morandi and Tamus Fedorenko down. You must win the battle before they die definitively or resurrect them and keep them all alive until the victory in that battle. If the three survive, the three will join your party. Continue the main story until you find Elias Abdelord and Devold Abdelord being ambushed. Make them survive the battle and they will join your party. At the end of this chapter, you will face Oz and Saria will be joining the battle this time. Make Saria survive this battle. Continue normally until chapter 4. Chapter 4 After the battle with Sherry, read the topic Pirates of Kadriga Fortress and go to this location. Reply will you aid us, and shortly thereafter Captain Merrick Elrig will join the party. Continue Chapter 4 normally, but this time in Barnisha Castle, kill Kashua or answer her two questions incorrectly. With the outcome of that part, Danum will now have at his disposal the Lord Class, the most powerful in the game as it has all the abilities of the other available classes. These are the main events of the neutral route. Now you can continue the main story until you defeat Dorgalua and finish the game again. Now, use the tool to go back to the beginning of the game in the first point of chapter 1. Continue normally until Corsaro, but this time you must kill Don Alto Presence or let him die in that battle. 
If he doesn't survive, you will automatically recruit another special character right away, the cleric Felicia Malkshin. Follow the story normally until the event in Balbamusa, this time agree to participate in it and enter the last route of the game, the lawful route. In the battle immediately following your choice, you must avoid killing or letting Ravnus Loxarian die. Defeat the other enemies and she'll run away. Chapter 2 Continue the main story and after the battle at Rehoboam Aqueduct read the topic Ravnus Loxarian captured. Go to the new location that opened on the map and in battle, answer I cannot leave you here and make Ravnus survive so she can run away again. Continue the story and in a mandatory battle in Kadriga Fortress, you must make the pirate Zapan Aluda survive so that he can join the group later. Chapter 3 Proceed normally through Chapter 3 to the fight at Brigantes Castle. After winning, answer how could they be for June and Avertive to join the group. Immediately after this recruitment, read the thread, Lord of Koratani missing before heading to Baana Highlands. In this battle, you must bring June and Avertive along in your group and decrease approximately 30% of the enemy leader's life. After that happens, Junin and Danum will start talking in their respective turns. Do not end the battle until Junin says, I am sure by now that his father joins him. When he finishes that sentence, you can defeat the enemy leader. Continue the main story, and after capturing Koratani Keep, return to Baiana Highlands for another battle where you must make Ravnus Loxarian survive. If she survives, she will finally join your group. Continue normally until the fight in Almorica to have Vice Bozik join your party. At the end of the chapter, in the battle against Ozma, make Hobbern survive. Chapter 4 Once you start Chapter 4, read the topic A Rift in the Dark Nights before entering Mount Hedden. Continue the game as normal, and after the Sherry fight, immediately go to Krasaro and use Hobirim in your party. At the beginning of the battle, answer that he is really Hobirim and now you must defeat Volok and then reduce Ozma's life to critical, that is, below 10%. After doing this she will surrender. In the next scene, answer as I owe you for my father and Ozma Moblacious will join your party. Now read the mysterious blast at Exeter topic again and head towards Vask. Win the battle there and then go to Lazan Fortress. In this location there will be two battles, the first one you can win normally. In the second, you must add June and Avertive to your group again. In this battle to recruit Ocean Rabin, you will have to wait for the conversation between them to end. The last line of the conversation is dot dot, spoken by Ocean. Until then, Danum, Junin, Ocean, and even the enemy leader cannot die or be petrified. This conversation takes a long time to happen, so good luck. If all goes well, after the battle Ocean will join the party. Continue the main story and save Kashua at Barnisha Castle. Now you must complete the Palace of the Dead. This is a very long and difficult dungeon with 100 floors, so be prepared with your party, equipment, and items. On floor 2, you'll find Robert Rudlam being ambushed by enemies. Make him survive and he will join your group. On floor 3, there's a secret passage for you to continue advancing. At this point, place a character before being the leader of the map to unlock the passage. 
Between floors 19 and 23 you have the possibility to drop wing rings that will help you a lot in battles. On the 24th floor there is a secret shop, it is worth visiting. Between floors 33 and 39 you have the possibility to drop wing boots that will help you a lot in battles. From floor 51 you can start dropping cursed weapons. On floor 53 you can drop the item ring of the dead, which allows you to transform one of your characters into the lich class. On floor 63 or 64 you must drop the wind god weapon, Boreas. This is very important to save time in the future. On the 65th floor there is a secret shop, it is worth visiting. On floor 71 you can drop the apocrypha spell, Abyss. On floor 99 you can drop another ring of the dead, but your focus should be on dropping the other two wind god weapons, Euros and Nodos. This is very important to save time in the future. On floor 100 you face Nibeth and receive very valuable items that will come in handy in the future. Finishing the Palace of the Dead, you can return to the main map and look for Deneb Grove in some shop around the map. When you find it, use the Upgrade Relic tool in the menu at least three times. After that, go to the Auction tool and choose each of the nine types of dragons you recruited earlier. To confirm, you must have a Flame Dragon, Frost Dragon, Thunder Dragon, Flood Dragon, Earth Dragon, Cloud Dragon, Arc Dragon, Dark Dragon, and Hydra. Then you must buy from her shop an Inferno Orb, Black Ice Orb, Storm Orb, Cataract Orb, Dust Orb, Gale Orb, Radiant Orb, Gloom Orb, and Void Orb. Once you make that purchase and leave, a quest to recruit Deneb will begin. You must go to Vask and win the battle with Deneb alive. If she survives, you can recruit her into the party. These are the main events of the Lawful Route. Now you can continue the main story until you defeat Dorgalua and finish the game again. With the game finished for the third time, we can finally start the extra content and challenges. Read the topic to the Songstress of Omish and go to Port Omish, where the first Kodo will start. To quickly end the battle there, choose the options, I can't let this get out of control, no turning back now, and is this the time to run? Now read the topic Storm Strikes Edlark and Iuria's Requiem and go to Galiet. Read the topic Iuria's Secret and go to the Pirate's Graveyard. You should go to the map called Into the Darkness here. Defeating the leader of this map, you recruit Iuria Wolf to your group and end this episode. Now read the topic San Bronza Ruins Discovered and go to the new place you unlocked on the map. San Bronza is another challenging dungeon and has 29 floors, so make sure your characters are equipped and prepared. From the 1st to the 13th floor of the Tower of Eternal Law you can drop the last tier of common spells. On floors 7 and 12 of the Tower of Eternal Law you can drop in Sanguine Rude, an item for you to transform a character into the Divine Knight class. On floor 12 the Apocrypha spell, Heavenly Judge, can also be dropped. After the Tower of Eternal Law, you'll access the Floating Ruins. On the first floor of the Floating Ruins you must drop the last missing Wind God weapon, Zephyros. From the 1st to the 11th floor of the Floating Ruins you can drop Tier 2 Summons, the most powerful spells in the game. On the 5th floor of the Floating Ruins the Apocrypha spell Heavenly Judge 2 can be dropped. You can drop the last Wind God Weapon and Retreat, 
but I recommend doing the floors to the top as there is a lot of great equipment that drops here. With the last weapon in your inventory, we return to the map to start the second coda. Read the topic The King of Brigantes and go to Heim to start the chapter. Now return to the Palace of the Dead and use the three maps you dropped from Nibeth to start directly at level 75 in the tower. Go back to floor 100 and now you'll face the secret boss, Blackmore. Blackmore drops the powerful Firecrest equipment and his two helpers, the Lich King and the Lich Queen, drop the most powerful set, the Ogre set. It's worth making an effort to make them drop at least the sword, armor, and helmet. When you defeat Blackmore, don't go back to the main map, but go to floor 98, where a secret passage will be triggered, giving access to more floors. On the new floors that opened, there is a shop on the 103rd floor and you can drop tier 2 ninjutsu on the 104th and 105th floors. On floor 111 you can drop the Apocrypha spell, Abyss 2. On floor 115, win the battle by keeping Warren Omen alive and then you recruit the best character in the game into your party. Returning to the main map, read the topic Rising from the Ashes and go to Heim to start Coda Chapter 3. Win all of the battles that follow to recruit Lancelot Hamilton into your party. We're almost at the end. Now comes the real hard part. Before starting the final episode of Coda, we need to face the 12 Heavenly Generals, some of the toughest bosses that drop some of the strongest weapons in the entire game. To face each one, you must have a Heaven's Fork in your inventory that will be consumed when accessing the battle. This item can be dropped at level 100 at the Palace of the Dead, or the materials to craft this item can be dropped at the Palace of the Dead and San Bronza Ruins. The generals can be found in the following locations. Palace of the Dead Floor 77, 86, 89, 93, and 96. Sand Bronze of Floating Ruins 4th, 8th, 14th, and 16th. Pirate's Graveyard on the map named Memory of Turquoise. And Farampa Wildwood on maps named Heart of Wildwoods and Wonder at the Gods Above. Remembering that these are extremely difficult battles, but it's worth it to drop the special weapons and be prepared for the last challenge of the game. With all that finished, let's move on to the last chapter of Coda. Read the topic A Monument of Peace and then go to Galiad. After winning the first three battles, the final challenge is presented where you can drop the best weapons in the game. Get your group ready and make the chapter title count. The Magnificent Twelve are formed by the Eight Dark Knights in the service of Lodis, and on your side the renegade Dark Knight Hobirim and the protagonists, Danum, Kashua, and Vice. In this difficult battle each of the Dark Knights has the possibility to drop their special weapon, including Lancelot with his sword Ambition, so use all your strength and strategies to win. Overcoming this challenge, congratulations! Now that you've won, there's only one thing left for you to do in this game. Use the tool to go back to Chapter 4 of Coda and go back to that last fight. Now your challenge is only with the Magnificent Three. You must use only Danum, Kashua, and Vice in this battle and you must defeat the entire army of Lodis without any of them dying, defeating all the enemies on the map before finishing Lancelot Tartarus. If you achieve this, you have the possibility to drop the ultimate version of the Brynhildr Sword and you receive the maximum title of the game, called One-Eyed Night Slayer.
If you made it this far, congratulations again. It was quite a challenge, but you completed everything Tactics Ogre Reborn had for you. You are the high champion. Enjoy the victory by leaving a like and subscribing to this channel for more videos from the Ogre Battle Saga. Thank you and see you next time.